Hello and welcome dear friends to my channel crafting with me Indiana Jones and I'm going to be your little Christmas fairy today because I have some projects I need to do for a very special occasion. So I want to take you with me on this Christmas adventure early this season. So let's go. <laughs> Today I'm co-hosting this last thing thrifted collaboration with my sweet friends Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Monica of Up All Night DIY, Jody at Jody Southern Seasons, and Zaina of OK at Home DIY. Please remember to check out their channels and the rest of the thrifted playlist down below in my description. Let's start with this wonderful, amazing wreath that I found. Well, it's not perfectly amazing simply because I don't like the color schemes. Many of the Christmas balls that are on here are faded because of the harsh Florida sun. So I'm going to take this apart, but let me tell you, I hope I can find another one of these because I absolutely love this wreath form. I hope I can find it somewhere because I think it's fabulous to be able to create your wreaths with leftover Christmas baubles from your Christmas tree. So as you can see, I have totally taken apart this Christmas wreath simply to replace all of those old balls and also to change the color scheme. I felt it was too dull, too monochrome. And all I'm doing is replacing with some other plastic Christmas balls, but some of them didn't fit quite right. So I had to use my glue gun to make the opening a little better and to, to glue some of them in. Now here I'm just holding one of the balls in just to make sure that it, it holds and it adheres and adding a little extra security, especially since this is going to be hanging up. You don't want your balls falling when, <laughs> when you hang up your wreath. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. You guys can take it as you wish. But as you can see, I took out at least uh, 40, 50% of the balls here. And I just wanted to replace the really faded ones with these bright, shiny ones. I love these plastic baubles. I've had some, most of these are from my own stash, but a lot of them I've also thrifted uh, alongside. As I've, as I've found like a bag of Christmas balls for a dollar, two dollars here and there. I just buy them because I love the variety and especially for the theme that I'm going for in the room that I'm decorating at the Deering Estate. It's going to be mid-century because it's very retro because I've chosen the song theme for my room is going to be rocking around the Christmas tree and I love all things retro. I love the fact that Christmas trees in the past had all different colors and it was just fun. A lot of handmade items and they were a lot of fun. Sometimes I feel like our trees now are so perfectly done like the Christmas trees you see in a store but sometimes I feel like they lack personality when they're too monochromatic and too uh, minimalistic. So this is not about being minimal this is maximalist mid-century modern Christmas that I am curating. Now let's add some beautiful silver tinsel, not real tinsel, but the fake tinsel. And this I bought for 98 cents at Walmart and it is the best buy. It's even cheaper than what you would buy at the Dollar Tree. And I am just encircling each one of my baubles with this silver tinsel. It makes such a difference and it truly is very nostalgic. It reminds me so much of the wreaths that my mom and my grandmother used to have in our house back up in New York City when I was a little girl at Christmas time. And I absolutely love all the colors. I have the blue, the pink, purple, uh, green, all colors, green, light green, dark green, silver, everything all together. And I really feel like it is such a festive wreath and perfect for my design for the Christmas room that I am decorating. Again, I'm so proud to be a part of this volunteer collaboration. And just so you know, it's not like I'm given a budget. I basically am donating my time and my money that I am creating this Christmas room. That's all on, on me. And some people, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're spending a lot of money. Taken to the fact that I don't spend money on myself getting my nails done or buying shoes, you know, expensive shoes. I'm really, really cheap. And a lot of the stuff that I've gotten for this room has been, um, found at thrift stores or donated or sponsored such as the Christmas tree you saw last week. So I'm very, very blessed and I look forward to this opportunity. This is my second time decorating. I've been volunteering 
for five or six years now, but this is only the second time I'm decorating a room all by myself. So I am thrilled to do it and more than happy to invest a little money on some Christmas decor that I love anyway. So a friend of mine gave me this little bag of tags and little bows and of course this old old glitter this glitter is from a store from the 70s here in Miami that no longer exists as well as this one and I thought it would be fun to use these tags to um, glitter them up like we used to have I remember when I was young we had glitter on all our little tags and stuff I, glitter was a big thing back in there it still is still is i know a lot of people don't like glitter i've had my issues with glitter and yet i still have a fascination and love for glitter i know i know i know so i'm sure a lot of you are like that as well i really love the um, multi silver glitter i thought that was really cute but yes this glitter is old glitter the, the blue the green and all of this glitter i'm using is from my stash from a friend of mine who gave it to me. She used to be an art teacher and I was so happy to get some of her stash and I hope she watches this and sees, oh, there's my glitter being used. So anyway, here I am just glittering up all of these tags and I'm going to create my own little ornaments with these tags, with which I think fit in perfect with my mid-century modern 1950s Christmas tree. I don't know about you, but I recall very, very well being a little kid and gathering around the dining room table with my grandmother and my mom and sitting there and listening to Christmas music or watching a Christmas movie and glittering all different things, just adding a little more glitz and glamour. I mean, after all, why not? So that's what I'm doing. I am just enjoying a, a lovely evening. Finally, in Miami, believe it or not, it got into the 70s, like low 70s, so it actually feels Christmassy to me now. Yes, it's the 70s, and I feel very, well, yeah, hey, I grew up with Christmas in the 70s, so it makes sense. So I just loved all of these different designs. Um, I don't know where she got this from, but I saw something very similar to this in uh, Timu. And also on Amazon, I've seen tags like vintage or retro Christmas tags. So I'm not sure if she got it from there, but I love these because not only are the images absolutely perfect for what I'm going for, but it's double sided. And I just, I was trying to combine the glitter with the drawing, as you can see there. I love that Santa Claus. And look at this cute little house. Speaking of which, I'll be making some of these houses very, very soon. I really wanna make a nice collection of putz houses to display. At my Christmas room at the Deering estate. So in my wonderful stash of Christmas items, I have lots of Christmas paper. I have those little ornaments. After Christmas, those ornaments turn out to be so cheap if you wait until they're like 80, 90% off. I think I paid like 20 cents for each pack and there's like a pack of six or eight of the wooden ones and then those clear acrylic ones you can use them all year long mind you i forgot i had these i could have used them all year long but of course i i put them away with my my christmas stuff sorry not halloween i'm confused it's christmas it's halloween i don't know anymore doesn't matter we're celebrating and it's fun anyway so <laughs> i'm putting this backdrop for the wreath i thought the wreath would look really cute here and of course, I love using my little iron for decoupaging with Mod Podge. And um, I think this was a perfect backdrop for my little wreath. And that wreath really, really brings on the vintage retro vibes. And all I'm doing is I'm using these little sticky tabs just to give it a little depth. You know how I love saying the word depth because I always think I sound like uh, uh, a suffering succotash, Sylvester the Cat anyway look at this so now i'm going to do like a, a reverse decoupage so i put the mod podge on top of the paper and because it's acrylic i'm trying to get the glitter off of there i'm just going to add it and that'll be the backdrop to my cute little snowman and i thought it was cute because she has or he has i should say a plaid um little scarf and see you can see how it's double-sided yeah it's a he he's got a little baseball cap i don't know it looks cute and for this one i'm just using white glitter all around and i really love the way these are turning out i hope you like them too i hope this inspires you to find some items and you can get like cards or cut out cards or i know that the graphics fairy has a lot of vintage uh like 
images that you can use precisely for a craft like this one and use tinsel use ribbon use like what i'm using here these um wire clay uh, wi uh, uh, i forgot what they're called i always forget what they're called i used to call them uh pipe cleaners they're not pipe cleaners but you know what it is you know what it is uh, wire or something or other anyway it doesn't matter you know what I'm talking about so I thought this was a perfect uh, combination of all of these items little bows little sayings and they all come together so so cute now if you're looking for a fun craft to share with family and friends while you're watching a Hallmark movie and being all corny and stuff this is it I'm telling you this is fabulous to just watch a nice Christmas movie in the background and just chit chat with your friends and have some nice hot cocoa and some cookies and stuff it's just so much fun and there I'm just adding again some more tinsel and those little sayings that I had in my stash and now let's look at the whole collection all together I am so happy with all of these and I'm just adding a few more little accessories but these came out so wonderful and I can't wait to display them on my mid-century modern Christmas at the Deering Estate. I can't wait to get started with my Christmas decorating. Woo! <laughs> All right, this lovely little item was found on the side of the road and I brought it in, cleaned it up, and then I painted it gold. And then this lovely little item that you see in the middle <laughs> was found by a friend of mine who found a pregnant cat and said there was a little black kitten that I've always wanted and there she is. She is a work of art. She's a work of something, I'll tell you that. She's always in the midst. So here I am taking a black cardboard that I had in my stash and I am going to affix to this not very well. You'll see, I am a mess. This, I, I don't know what I thought I was doing, but obviously I thunk it wrong. But here, instead of rolling it out like a normal person would do, no, I just like plopped it on there. It was not straight. It was such a mess. I got some glue on it. I had to clean off the glue. But this beautiful image, this gorgeous image is from Timu. How could I not include this in my decor this year? This was absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy I found this. And I'm so happy that it fits the frame. However, I found out later after I cut out those white edges, this is actually smaller than the frame itself. So I have to come up with something clever to um, fix the gaps. I don't know, maybe some like just black paper in the back would, would help. But I just love it. I don't care if it's got a gap. I don't care if it's not perfect. For me, the image is absolutely perfect for a mid-century modern Christmas. I love it. And there she is again. There's Kudu. That's my little work of art that I found. And of course, she had to get back in the center because she is the center of attention. It's a black piece of paper, so she figures it's made for her. <laughs> now, to dress up this frame a little more, as you can see, I spray painted it gold. Actually, Luke helped me and spray painted it gold since I was too busy with work and getting home late and stuff. I decided to add this cute little red ribbon. I was thinking to myself, oh, I should get red velvet and a red velvet ribbon and this and that. And I said, you know, let's pick our battles here, girl. You have a ton of red ribbon. It doesn't have to be velvet. It could just be, be what it is. Just be what it is because, like I said, I'd rather take my time and spend um, the extra funds that I'm going to spend on other decor for the room itself. And nobody's going to notice whether this is velvet or grow grain and they're not going to care. It's just add a, a little bit of color and just a little bit of splash and make it even more festive. Now, um, I'm sure this wasn't an antique frame. It was just an old wooden frame. It was pretty busted up. I had to fix it up a lot before Luke even got to paint it. So it's being well used. It's not in the garbage. So anything that's being well used and not in the garbage is fa to me fantastic. So keep your eyes out when it's garbage day, people. Make sure. I know it's called junk, junk or necking or whatever it is. Junk, junking and necking or whatever you call it when you're 
you're looking out your window to check what's in the garbage while you're driving by. But this was definitely a very good find. So you see, absolutely free. And the picture that I found on Timu, I think, was around $3. You can't beat it. For $3, this whole project, I mean, really. And it's such a big, it takes up such a big space. Now, here's another thing I found at the thrift store. This is from 1952, I believe. It's a songbook of carols for the family how perfect is this and all i'm going to do is frame it i'm not sure if i'm going to keep it in this white frame or paint it keep your eyes open this might come up again soon luna has come for an electrical inspection of this little lamp that i found at the thrift store for just around two dollars and i'm just cleaning it up a bit before i get started but they were both so curious about this i don't know why why are cats so curious about the strangest things but i'm cleaning up this lamp and it's not a very like it's a nothing kind of lamp it's just a lamp no big deal right but wait till i show you the actual lampshade i'm going to use for this and that's going to fit perfectly in the room that i am decorating i found this lampshade again at the same estate sale where i found the original wreath that you saw at the beginning <gasps> look at it it's astro it's like oh i love it it's at the what is it called the astro or i forgot what it's called but i love it love it and this is literally from the 50s or the 60s and i think it's perfect i feel like i should get a smaller bulb just so you don't see that bottom plastic side but part at the bottom but i think it works just fine and i love it this last little item i actually found in an antique store but because it was pretty banged up they gave it to me for only four dollars and i thought it was well worth it especially since it fits in so well once again with my theme i'm cleaning it up it was pretty clean but i'm just cleaning it up a little more i was hoping that maybe it would still work so here i bought d batteries. try finding d batteries out there they're expensive and well i need them anyway for hurricanes <laughs> so i had them in my stash of course but of course the little truck did not work so I gave up with that hope. Now I am just adding a few little polka dots because the paint was so faded and I just wanted to add a little more because again, I'm not trying to show vintage stuff. I'm trying to show a living room in the 50s at Christmas time. So I felt like I did need to spruce up that little clown, especially since it's headless. We don't have a headless clown for Christmas anywhere i i looked and tried to see if there was some no we don't want a headless crown clown for anything having to do with christmas once again here's luna checking out everything i'm doing I had to sit right in the middle when i was trying to make my little clown head so i did it off camera actually and all i did was get a little bit of that um oh what you call foam clay that i love to use so much and created this cute little clown face and now i'm using a little bit of mica powder just to like give it a little you know makeup i didn't want to use paint because i was afraid of really messing it up but the mica powder just added a little bit of blush and a little bit of color to the to the eyes i also added a little bit of e6000 as well as hot glue to place it right there at once it was dry look how cute he looks i think he's fabulous of course now he needs a little hat so i made a little hat for him and I think it suits him very well and it matches the red of his shirt. It, didn't, it couldn't be a very bright red. It had to be a little bit faded. So this paper was absolutely perfect. Now, what am I going to do with that gaping hole in the middle? I really was very upset that I couldn't use the batteries. Well, I thought, well, why don't I do what I do with my little tins that I find, my tea tins and my all the little tins that I find around, you know, shopping at garage sales and what have you. And I just filled it with styrofoam and decided, well, he's going to drive a clown, not a, a clown, uh, this little truck, not only filled with some animals from the Big Ring Circus, but with some wonderful Christmas decor and treats for all the little kids. So I'm using these bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree and they're like yellow. They're a very pale yellow color, which I love. I didn't want to use white, but a very pale color. Then I had these little candy canes from Hobby Lobby and they were perfect. All I did is it was just snip off the top little ring so they didn't look like they were ornaments per se. And I just continued adding all of these little um, accessories, those little candy canes. I had little peppermints that were actually the yellow 
uh, peppermint bases for those trees when I took them off I just added them to the three ring circus truck or yeah I guess it's a truck and I just kept adding and adding and I had so much fun because like I said I love doing those little awesome blages with those uh, tins tea tins and all different types of tins and of course there's Luna to join us again and I just added all the little uh, candied items that I had around the house and there I have a whole collection of them and I had so much fun putting this together and all I can say is what a difference it makes to just add a little bit to any decor with some tinsel with some fake candies and I think this looks even better than I had originally pictured it with all the little different accessories that I added to it to really make it festive. Now, of course, you know, I always want to name things. So I'm trying, I'm, you know, in between two names for this clown, it's either Tinsel the Clown or Jingles the Clown. I don't know. You tell me what's a good Christmas clown name and, and tell me if I should add some more little items to the clown itself to make him more Christmassy. But I just had so much fun creating this. I hope you like it too. Thank you once again to my friends Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Monica of Up All Night DIY, Jody at Southern Seasons, and Zena of OK at Home DIY for joining me in this collaboration and to all of the other crafters and creators who are in this playlist. Remember to check out all of their channels and their videos in the description down below. Thanks again for stopping by and if you like this, please remember to like, share and subscribe and come back for more. And as I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure and come back for more wonderful Christmas adventures as I prepare for the Deering Estate this year. I'll see you again soon.